Sheep rearing is one venture that farmers in Uganda have continued to ignore despite the low investment requirement that can be turned into high profits. Many farmers say the low consumption of mutton in the country is one major factor hindering sheep rearing, even though mutton is one of the most expensive meats. The rearing of sheep has, to a large extent, been a substance scale. According to statistics from the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, there are only about 1 million sheep in Uganda, and the number is likely to reduce even further. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. Now the advantage with sheep is that the rate at which the gestation period is shorter, so that means I have more time for multiplication. At a month, you expect something like that from this. And what am I doing? Just making sure they eat early in the morning, they eat in the afternoon and the evening, and they have water. Adrian Sebuguao is a 20-year-old shepherd. Do not be fooled by his farm looks. He is also a first-year law student in Uganda's prestigious Makere University. Currently, he is practicing his farming skills at his father's farmland in Kachiri, Wakiso district. But why sheep rearing for a young man with a future as a lawyer? I started earlier on, towards the end of my senior six, and I did it all through my senior six vacation. And over time, it has been expanding and growing. Uh, and basically, it's what I have. I started small, of course, with one room. The first room up there is the room I started with, with around six sheep and one male, one male one. Uh, I started over time, and they went, I went on expanding as I bought more, and the ones I'd already bought earlier were going on producing and producing, producing more. And basically, I went on expanding, as you see, from the first room to the second to the third, and hopefully to have more and more as I keep growing. I chose sheep uh, because it was something small that I would do, depending on the little capital I started with earlier on. Uh, sheep, is, sheep was affordable at that time. You could raise around 150, 180,000 to buy one. So if you could get two, it would, be, it would be easier to start, depending on the resources I had. And given the work needed at that time, it was practical work that was possible to be done. The feeding, taking care of, it was something I could do that was in my scope at that time. And over time, I went on appreciating it the more, and I went on learning. Sheep rearing might not need one to spend so much to start, although there are some essential factors to consider, such as a piece of land where you will construct their housing structure, capital to help you acquire a male and female sheep of a good breed. This will produce and multiply within a very short period. First of all, before I talk of the monetary capital you need, you need, first of all, land or an area or space where you can put up the project. It starts from there. Depending on how big or how small, though I prefer to start small, because I want to be as practical as possible. You, let me consider you have a small piece of land where you can set up either a structure, that's if you can. Because what we need for a structure, you need local material, timber and wood. Necessary, that's basically what you need to set up a practical and doable uh, structure for sheep. That's the first step. You set up a small, you shelter it. You can start with, let me say, one female sheep and one male one. That's two of them. Uh, for somebody who, who can't set up a structure, you can use the space you have, as long as you have a feeding trough for food and then for water. That's basically how it is. That's for the area you need. Then for money, depending on how much you have, but roughly one sheep can cost you around 150, 120 to 180. That's the estimation. So around there you can get a young one at around six months. You can start with that. And then for matters of expansion, because you're doing to expand, you could, if you can afford the other, you buy one female and one male. 
So you have two, that makes it two. When the female conceives, it, it multiplies. And you don't necessarily need to buy another male because you already have one. So that's basically what you need. And then feeds, that, that's something also you should consider, where you can access feeds uh, depending on what. But basically it's grass, that's for starters. You need grass to feed them, banana peelings, they also feed on that. So basically that's what you need to start. Sheep have an added advantage of producing wool over any other animal. For this reason, it is important for commercial shepherds to look for the best breed. Among the most popular breeds considered worldwide best for both quality mutton and wool include Bano, Bellary, Cheviot, Decani, Hassan and Merino. In Uganda, however, farmers have adopted the local breed. When crossed with the exotic breed like Merino breed, they produce a crossbreed. Starting, I wasn't, I just wanted to start and do something and have something. So I started with the lo local breeds. I started with the local breeds, which are easily accessible. So I started with two of them and went later on with more knowledge as I went on gathering because my dad is more vast with farming and all that. So he helped me source out for different breeds. As you go on picking interest and you be on the outlook, somewhere you can find a breed that you can't afford, you can still go getting it. But personally, I started with the local breed and over time, I think it was around six months, six months into the project, I got another different breed, the Merino breed, which I got. And breeds are important uh, for matters of production at the end of the production you want because you could choose to have local breed but then it would be just local but when you breed it up that's more ad value addition added so basically right now i have around three breeds i have the local breed i have the merino breed and i have an intermediate of an in, uh, interbreed of the two basically that's what i have cross breeds of purely merino and then local uh, i'll get you one this is this is a breed it's not purely merino, but it's a breed. That's why you see it has the wool on it. This is a wick, but then this is purely local. This is local. It has no wool on it or nothing, so this is local. This is a crossbreed. Local and a merino. It's not purely merino. When it comes to management, sheep are one of the easiest animals to look after. However, a farmer will need to go an extra mile in ensuring a well-ventilated and well-raised housing structure, disease control and a good, timely nutritional diet every day. Personally, the challenge I face most is the structure because my structures are built in a way that I need to let out, I, I leave passages for cleaning because when you're cleaning you need to pass out the droppings outside of the shelter so the pas this passages you lead you leave all the spaces you leave uh, sometimes sheep get stuck within those passages and let me say you're not here if they find they, they could either break legs or something so it becomes that's another that's one of the challenges then the other is the breeding itself interbreeding, selecting the breeds itself because most the, as you see them here they are mixed breeds so it becomes hard for you to tell which breed is the other and the other though that's something you can work on so basically those are the challenges the management of the structure so if you can find a way of doing your structures in a way that your ship is safe it's better the other would be uh, the ordinary ship diseases but the advantage is that I do zero grazing so the access or the space in which they would get, let me say, diseases or something like that, it's hard because they are within. Sheep really eats a lot, like it feeds a lot. So you have to be ready and to be able to feed it because the more you feed it, the, more, the, the faster it grows and the larger it grows because you're looking at the commercial bit of it. Basically what you need is, first of all, grass. If you can access grass, any kind of grass, sheep eats grass. Then to add on, you need banana peelings. That's the second thing you need. Then for the other thing that would perhaps come in later as you do the project, would be adding in a little bit of 
minerals and all that. But still, with the minerals, you need the banana peelings. What I do also, I have an advantage that I use silage. That's another thing. You grow either maize or elephant grass. When it grows, later on, I have a machine around the farm that uh, whatever is it, in, chops it into pieces and then it's stored. This is the elephant grass that has been cut. So, and it's like this when it's still a dry, a wet season. You, this is what you have. But in preparation for the dry season, when this is no longer existent, uh, it's drying up and all that, you'd be having backup of this. This is silage. So after you get this, add in a little bit of moralysis and then cover it. It's always covered. Like this is a heap, but this is the covered one. So after, even if it's a month, three, two, four, you can still get this. And then they would still feed. So you're covered all year. The farming calendar has different seasons, the dry and wet season. During the wet season, you're at the peak because you can access grass easily. Because it's raining and grass is easily growing. It, it's all over green. But when the dry season is setting in, the grass is drying up and your sheep, your animals still need to feed. So those are four. It starts with the green grass. You add on the banana peelings if you can access them. Then you add on silage. Later on, if you can dry the banana peelings and get something, add value to them, it would also be an advantage. For farmers in the urban setting, with fewer chances of accessing green grass and banana peelings, you may want to consider some of these feeds, and giving them in the right quantities is a bonus. For a baby lamb, broken maize, 22%, broken gram, 20%, almond cake, 35%, wheat, 20%, mineral salt, 2.5%, and salt, 0.5%. And for the adult sheep, broken maize, 35%, Broken gram, 15%, almond cake, 25%, wheat, 20%, mineral salt, 2.5%, and salt, 0.5%. On top of a good feeding schedule, you can keep your sheep healthy by vaccinating and regular deworming. What I do for mine is I feed them thrice a day depending on how long. So early in the morning, at around 8 to 9, I feed them. And then at around 3, 2 to 3, I also feed them. And then later on in the evening, at around 6 to 7, they also feed so that they go through the night. So for how much they eat, this takes you back to how much you can get. The, the more you can get, because as, even as a person, the more you eat and feel satisfied, the better depending on how much you can get. So if you can feed, maximize and make sure the troughs are always full early in the morning, that they get a full meal. Because they can, you get signals when they are hungry and when they are full. Early in the morning before they are fed, they're always, they're always crying, they're, they're unsettled early in the morning. But when you feed them, you'll notice that there's a calm. Till the time the food is needed again. So that helps you to know how much you give them. But the best is to give them as much as you can. Because the more you feed them, the, uh, the faster they grow and the larger they grow in size for commercial purposes. Sheep and goats are similar in a lot of ways. This makes it quite difficult for many people to differentiate the two animals. For this reason, it may be rather hard to find a defined sheep market in Uganda. However, a keen eye can identify the two. A goat is more slender of the two, while a sheep is tabier. Sheep have 54 chromosomes, while goats have 60 chromosomes. A goat's tail is for the most part stands up while a sheep's hangs down. 
A goat is a typical browser, feeding on leaves, shrubs, twigs and vines. A sheep on the other hand, loves to graze on grass and clover. Goats are curious by nature and are quite independent. A sheep on the other hand, prefers to stay put and is a follower. A goat has a beard, while a sheep has a mane. Sheep tend to mature faster compared to goats. For this reason, they have the capacity to conceive thrice a year, while goats conceive twice a year. Despite all this, one might still fail to differentiate the two after slaughter. In Uganda, it could actually not be so easy finding mutton to buy from a local butcher. But here are some advantages on why farmers, such as Adrian, would opt for commercial sheep farming over goat rearing. For any animal, let me say cows, goats, sheep, your first profit is what it gives birth to. Because if I bought one sheep and by, the, by four months I have three or I have two, two extra, that's already a profit. Now the advantage with sheep is that the rate at which the gestation period is shorter, so that means I have more time for multiplication. Because if in a year, January, I bought one, it gave me four, it gave me two after another month, that's already two. Then after the other months, I already have four. So that's the first profit you get. And then the other advantage is that the little ones of sheep, the rate, the, the rate at which sheep grows is very high, given that it's fed well. So the multiplication rate, because let me take an example of the little one that has been pro just produced after the four months. It's going to take me around three to four months for it to conceive again. So you're seeing the cycle. As the mom is also giving me more too, the little one is also conceiving to give me more too. So you're seeing, and the advantage is that when, it, when you feed it very well, the multiplication rate is high. At three weeks, you expect something like this. At a month, you expect something like that from this. So this gave me two. As you can see, I have this. And then I have that. These are two from one. And what am I doing? Just making sure they eat early in the morning, they eat in the afternoon and the evening, and they have water. That's all I'm doing. And then the cycle is going on to continue. So the expansion is more like that. That's the commercial bit. Then the other advantage, on a larger scale as you go on expanding, uh, there's, when, depending on the breeds you have, because we know sheep, especially the merino, that have wool and all that that's another advantage if you do it on a large scale and you go and expanding you have a large pool of, of wool and we all know wool could, could be a raw material for various things then the other advantage would be uh, you can the droppings of sheep and let me say goats are more of another value that the droppings can be used as feeds for fish so if you can do a fish project also that means you're ready the, the feeds are covered or if you yeah if you can do for commercial purposes also you can package your droppings so you you're, you're winning always there are some floatings all along the sides uh, those are the feed the, the droppings i was talking about ship droppings so this be a, this is a fish pond as you can see uh where you see the waves that's where there are very many in here, so this is how to link the two. You link the ship and the fish, the fish project. If you have the dropping zone here acting as feeds, and this has droppings also within it, so here you're killing two birds at once. When finding market, Adrian has some experience to share on how to locate market. For starters, we all know ship is eaten. The same way goat's meat is eaten, the same way mutton is eaten, the same way beef is eaten. So that's where the market starts. However, to find the market, you need to be well versed with the buyers, where to find the buyers. The central place I can tell of anyone who is doing sheep, there's a bigger picture, but I will speak from a smaller picture and a more realistic picture, an accessible picture. Uh, there's an area along Karere Market, there's an abattoir there for sheep and goat meat. So if you can't go there, get anyone there that is buying on a large scale, you can't sell it there. 
local butchers around your area, your locality, or an area you can access that where they sell goat meat, you go there and talk to them. Can they buy you sheep? Depending on how. Or somebody else who wants to rear also. Because somebody could pick an interest that they like. I want, give me two little ones. You sell them. Give me, I also want to start. So that's the market. For mutton itself, that's for the selling. And then for those that want to rear, that's where the market starts. For the local market, mature sheep ready for slaughter could cost between 120,000 to 200,000 shillings, depending on the size and breed. And if you are buying in kilos for consumption from a local butcher, the price should be the same as goat's meat. After all is said and done, how then would you expect to benefit if you were to start up your sheep farm? Uh, the benefits are very interesting, especially for, I would say, for a young man like me. Uh, we, I'll, I'll talk from my perspective. You have needs that you need. For example, you're at university, you need to buy this, you need to buy that. It helps you already have your own project that you're doing. Because if I bought one at 180, that means in the next four months, I could be able to sell two that have, been, that have grown at perhaps a higher price. And if I've been feeding them well, and they're giving me exactly the size I want, it could even be more than that. Ch times where you can't call daddy, you can't call mommy for help, you have your project. Though sheep is reared mainly for mutton and wool, there are other return avenues you may consider for business. Sell as lamb to other farmers to start up their sheep farms. Sell good male breeds for reproduction and crossbreeding. Use sheep droppings for manure and animal feeds. So, if you are still wondering on where to get that large amount as a startup capital, Adrian has these words of wisdom that we hope will encourage you to take the stand. I have a farming background. I grew up in a farming background. So along the way, I learned and appreciated it. That's the first step. However, we all go on learning and we all ought to be as practical as possible. I'll take you back to how I started. If I had my 150, perhaps a balance from the my pocket money or from my side hustle or from anywhere, uh, ordinarily one would choose to go spend it elsewhere or something like that. But here's the thing, when you use that 150 to go spend it on whatever you use, you want to buy a shirt, you want to buy anything, you're going to buy it and that's all. But here's the thing, when I buy, for example, if I'm at, at campus, I'm going to get from my upkeep or from anywhere, handouts or anything, I have my 150. I'm going to buy my one ship, a female one. Bring it, drop it here. In four months, when the semester is done, I'll be getting back and I have already two. If you had 150 and spent it, I don't know, whatever you did, what will you be showing in four months? And that's the thing. And that's where the challenge comes in. Uh, I, I do what I do because, of course, you need that. But then this would go on. If you start earlier, and that's the a, that's a advantage every young person out there you ha has you have an advantage that the earlier you start, the better. If I started in, in January, in four months, if I gave it time and went on expanding, I would be way, way better. So that's the thing. We are looking forward to do. Any opportunity you have, seize it. If you can access land, it doesn't take a lot. 150, get it. You could keep on saving it, 50, 50. Get your 150, buy, drop it. And the, the beauty with all this farming thing is that you buy, I just do the feeding part. But within time, you see what you had expanding. When I look back, I can't believe that I started with two. You get, so you go on, you go on buying and you go on expanding. So that's the thing. The earlier you start, the better. It's a very beautiful thing. And you always have plan B. It's, on, it's not only one thing. Right now, I, can't, I don't have to ask dad for anything. You just have come here, sell one, 150, 200, and you already, your, your 200 is covered. You start small. You, do it as a joke. Buy two. That's 300. Sacrifice it. Let it go. Four months, you'll be having six. More four months, you get more money, you buy. And that's the beauty. You go on expanding. And what do you do? Just feeding, making sure they eat very well, make sure they clean up. And you're working. As you work on anything else that you'll be doing, you keep on expanding. <laughs>